Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how I made my first set of cards using the April 2022 sheet load of cards. I hope you'll stick around, see how they're made, and maybe get some tips along the way. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. The beginning of the month always means it's time for a new sheet load of cards. Yesterday I shared with you a look at this month's free to subscribers printable as well as my first set of cards. I also told you in that video how to download the printable for free. Now that video, which I call the debut, is linked in the description box below if you haven't yet seen that video and downloaded your free file. Today, I'm going to be showing you how I made the first set. I will be showing you how I cut each of the papers and card stocks, and maybe even give you some tips along the way. Also today, my team of collaborators will be sharing their sets with you. I have collaborators here on YouTube and over on Instagram. To see what they have created, I have links in the description box, but here on YouTube, you can just click right on that hashtag in the title and all of the YouTube team videos will pop up. Over on Instagram, I have just linked the hashtag search and you will see what they have created over there. Now, if you're inspired to create with the April 2022 sheet load of cards, I would love for you to use the two hashtags that are at the top of each page of the printable. That way I can go search for those throughout the month and see what you're creating. This month's sheet load of cards, if you follow the supply list and cutting guides, will yield you eight cards using just four pieces of six by six pattern paper and five solid card stocks. It is special not only because of the 6x6 paper we're using this month, but it's a mini slimline with a fold on the short side. I did talk a little bit more about that yesterday, why I decided on that, but it also resulted in kind of a fun fold where you see part of the inside from the front of the card. Let's go ahead and take a look at the main supplies I will be using for the set, and then we'll get started on the process. Here's a look at the main supplies that I'll be using for today's cards. For my pattern papers, I got out four pieces from Not Too Shabby's Spring Is Here paper pad. I chose two pairs of two pattern papers. You could always have these be the same or different. That is up to you. I just wanted to keep the colors for my inks and my focal points the same. Speaking of that, for my focal points, I will be using the Abstract Botanical stamp set that I created in collaboration with Not Too Shabby, and I will be stamping those with Gina K Designs Wild Lilac. Down here on the bottom left, you'll see that I have some die cut pieces, and these were actually part of the exclusive class you could add to the bundle when you ordered it, and I've also created a template to help me stamp all of these easily. Now the bundle is no longer available, but some of the stamp sets are, and you can even add on that class to get the free cut files that go with it. If you're interested in that, I do have links in the description box below. As I get into the process, I will let you know of any other tools or products I add, but as always, if I leave you with any questions, you can leave those in that comment section below, and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! As I was getting ready to cut the pattern papers for today's cards, I realized that at the top of page 2, instead of saying cutting guides, 
it repeated sketch and supply list. Now don't worry, your printable will have the correct wording, but I did not reprint it for this. Before you cut your first papers, you'll want to make sure that if there is a specific orientation, that if you have it in that orientation, you turn it 90 degrees before you make that first cut at three inches. That way when it's back sitting landscape, your pattern will be the way you want it. You see here that I started by cutting each of those pattern papers in half at six inches by three inches. And then for my next cut, I need a one and a half inch wide piece and a four and a half inch wide piece. So I line those up on the marks on my cutter and I cut each of those pieces into two. Just a heads up that if you don't have six by six papers for this, you could use a single double sided 12 by 12 as well. Now I'm gonna be cutting my white cardstock that will be both for my card base and for the sentiment piece. Now first we're gonna start by cutting this into two strips that are 11 inches by three and a quarter inches. We will be doing some scoring on these pieces later to end up being our card bases. With the part that is left over, we will be cutting our rectangles for our sentiments. And before you use the dimensions I give you, you might want to bring in your sentiment stamp set and just make sure that it's gonna fit on that area. I'm gonna be using just a note and that three inch by one inch will work just fine. Now from this first strip, I went per the cutting guide and I just cut two sentiment strips from it, but you could always just keep cutting from this single strip until you have as many of the sentiment pieces as you need. You can definitely cut more than two per one piece of cardstock. You'll see here as I cut the next piece of white cardstock that I go ahead and cut six sentiment strips from that piece that was left over. Now for the future pieces of white cardstock that I cut down, I just save those strips for another project. Now it's time to cut the pieces for CS2. These are actually the same size as the sentiment strips we just cut, but this will be out of a solid cardstock, or you could do like I did here and use a pattern paper. Now I'm not gonna use a full sheet. I just cut until I had eight three inch by one inch pieces from this six by six. It coordinated with my other patterns, and I just like that little extra added texture that it gave. Now this piece is also a great way for you to use up scraps if you have any of those as well. Now it's time to bring back in those pieces we cut for our card bases and do a little scoring. Now I will be using my little mini score buddy, but if you don't have something like this, don't worry. What you can do is just get a ruler and one of your card bases, and I just made a little mark with my fingernail where six and a quarter was at on the ruler. Then I folded the card at that spot, and this ends up being the same as if you would have scored and folded it. I just like the more clean look of the fold by using the score buddy. Instead of using the stylus that comes with my score buddy, I do prefer this pencil bone folder from Cat Scrappiness. It seems to be a little bit more sturdy and slides along that paper like butter. I do usually go down that line a couple times and then I will fold that for my card base. If you wanna check out this pencil bone folder, I do have it linked in the description box below. Once I had all of my pieces scored, I used that same bone folder to help me get a nice crisp fold. My next step was to get my pattern papers onto my card base. You'll see there that I switched the two patterns up so that the cards will have one piece from each pattern on the front. The larger piece gets centered on the shortcut part, and then the smaller piece, once it has adhesive on it, it gets put on the inside of the card. You'll see here then, when the card is closed, you can still see some of that pattern paper, but your personal message on the inside can be hidden. I continued adding these pattern papers until all eight of the card fronts were decorated. 
Now it is time to stamp my focal points. I will be using one of the botanicals from my stamp set with my coordinating stamp template and pre-die cut pieces. If you did take my exclusive class, you're gonna get a much better look at how this works, but basically I stamp my botanical onto the back of my Misty, and then I line up that stamping template right over that. Then I can insert the die cut pieces and stamp, and then it's almost perfect. I keep stamping until all eight botanicals have been done. I kept my Misty out and brought in the pieces for my sentiment. I am using just a note and will be stamping it with the Wild Lilac ink. Before I figure out exactly where I want my placement to be, I did bring in one of my botanicals to help me figure that out. This will cover up part of the left of my piece, so I wanted my sentiment to be centered over in the right. Once I had that in place and I made sure it was straight across with the grid on the door of my Misty, I inked it up and stamped it eight times with that purple ink. The sentiment piece isn't quite done yet. I do need to add that purple pattern paper to the back. Now the purple is not a mat around the sentiment. It is more of just an offset piece since it is the same size. So I put adhesive on the back of the sentiment and just tried to get it so there was an even border on the right and bottom. Once again, I did this to all eight before moving on. Once the sentiment pieces were put together, it was time for me to finish my cards. I started by figuring out where I wanted my sentiments to go, and then I added adhesive to about the back half of that, just to make sure I did not glue my card shut. And you'll see here that when I open the card, the sentiment goes with the front, it doesn't stay with the inside. I put the rest of the sentiments onto the card fronts, and then I brought in my art glitter glue in that fine tip bottle to adhere down my die cut pieces. Now although I did adhere mine down flat, you could definitely use some foam tape to pop these up off the card. I let these set to the side for about five minutes to dry and here's a look at the finished cards. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made my first set of cards using the April 2022 sheet load of cards. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Don't forget to go visit all of the collaborators by either clicking on that hashtag in the title or the links toward the top of the description box. And until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.